This is the first opportunity this country's ever seen in recent memory that from coast to coast, from the east to the west, we have like-minded premiers. This is a table of mutual interests on how we can continue to, to create wealth in, in the communities that we represent. None of us, nor do our citizens, appreciate a message that it's either Ottawa's way or the highway. Yeah! The theme uniting the pregame huddle you saw there appears to be in large part the carbon tax. Conservative premiers from Alberta, New Brunswick, Saskatchewan and the Northwest Territories gathered in Calgary today united in their opposition to the federal government's price on carbon. They say the feds are infringing on their jurisdiction. Ontario and Saskatchewan recently lost their court challenges on that argument though. Saskatchewan plans to appeal its case to the Supreme Court. New Brunswick Premier Blaine Higgs was pursuing a legal challenge too. So. Is that still the case, given the recent losses? Blaine Higgs is the Premier of New Brunswick. He joins us now from Calgary. Hi, Premier. Great to see you again. Nice to be here, Rashi. Good afternoon. You're about to sit down with Premiers from across the country in Saskatoon. So I'm wondering what the point of this smaller meeting was. Was it just optics? Or are you trying to send a message to Ottawa? Well, you know, it was really about the, the national unity and, and the idea of we have some very um, distinct common interests across our country. And having six like-minded um, you know, premiers get together and, and discuss, you know, the concerns that are real. Um, and, and, and to kind of go to the COF meeting with a plan to, to have some concrete decisions made. Often these, these meetings uh, have a communique written before they advance and before the event and, and um, you know, that doesn't say much. So, so we want a little more strategic action, uh, a little more straight talk and, and um, a, a plan because we're, we're concerned about the economic future of our country. Does it set up though a divisive sort of environment between those who you call like-minded and in your fellow premiers at this, this meeting in, in Calgary use the same term often in the press conference today. Does it set up sort of a, an us versus them environment, those who you consider like-minded and those who you don't? Well, you know, I guess it, it certainly could be seen as that. I, I, I understand that. Uh, but I think it's, it's kind of a first for Canadian uh, politics in many ways that, that we'd see uh, six provinces, you know, from coast to coast here. And, and I've said from the beginning that in, in New Brunswick, I, I feel myself like a stranded asset. And, um, and I feel, you know, very aligned now right from uh, through Ontario and, and right through to, to through Alberta, through to Alberta. And, and I'm, I'm hopeful that we can gain the same sort of level of concerns and, and, and the realization that, that our country in, in, uh, indeed is in, in trouble economically. But we have major challenges that we have to face together. So having voices that are kind of going in with, uh, with some of the topics that need to be discussed and need to be resolved, and uh, I think is going to be helpful. But if unity and, and, produ and being productive in this upcoming meeting is the priority, how does this, this sort of block of like-minded uh, premiers advance that? How does it, does, it, does it not just set up sort of something that, that will produce the opposite? Well, we're, we're hopeful that, that that won't be the case because I think we, we come in with at least, you know, six that, that have, uh, have a strategic vision about, uh, you know, utilizing what we have going forward in our natural resources to help to... Uh, innovate and, and grow our economy and you know, let our let our energy and and resources fund innovation um, you know we know about this election coming up it's it's going to be a greenwashing in many ways where we we see uh, well you're either for the for a carbon tax and if you're not you're you're against climate change and and we're saying no oh, no we're we're totally committed to reducing emissions we're totally committed to our targets um, in fact in New Brunswick we're at 20 percent of our 30 percent target now and that's a 2030 target and we, we can exceed that easily without a carbon tax. Uh, so we want to get the message clearly out there that, you know, you don't have to tax people more. We don't have to open up a whole new revenue of taxation to fund a government abuse. We can, we can actually use what we have while we're using it to fund the next innovation and the, and the future generations. What do you mean by government abuse? I mean that once a new tax revenue stream is opened up, then governments will consistently find a way to spend it, and in many ways spend it strategically to secure a, a continued vote. And, and that's what we see happening right here. Except with well, respect, sir, the, the federal government is actually rebating that money. In your province, uh, the rebate is supposed to be up to $583 in 2022, while the amount of, of money spent or the, the revenue accrued is going to be five hundred and uh, sorry, $470 by 2022 in your province. Yes, by 2022. And that's not taking into account. I mean, that's that's what the um, extent is now saying that that's not the full amount. And, and at this point, um, we've put 
afford a carbon plan that takes into account um, an output-based pricing model, and it's, it hasn't been accepted. So what about the impacts and the, down, and the downstream costs of, of the impacts on our industry, or the move of our private sector investment, which out here in the West has exceeded $100 billion in the last couple of years alone. Or a province like New Brunswick that has 90% uh, uh, of our trade is, is uh, to the, to the uh, foreign trade, mostly to the U.S., and, and they're not subject to any of this. So what does that say about our ability to, to compete and have jobs for the future? Do you think, though, that the carbon tax is solely responsible, for example, to the capital flight that you're pointing to in the oil patch? I mean, the price of oil had a lot to do with that as well. Well, the reason that we don't see our Alberta oil flowing from coast to coast and, and, us, and us being able to use it uh, in the refineries in the East Coast or, or being exported um, is simply because of changing rules and regulation out of the federal government. I mean, they, they, that, is, that is the reason. How do you know that? Reason. How, How do, do I know, know that? that? Because I spent over 30 years in the industry. I know that it's a long-term investment and volatility up and down has been historic forever. So, so for anyone to, to say that uh, they walked away because of uh, a, a change in usage, it will happen over time, and it'll happen like the Kodak, uh, you know, the film industry. When, when, uh, when the uh, digital photography came along, the uh, film industry was out overnight. We will have innovation gradually phase out uh, fuel, whether it be gas or oil. But let's not, you know, uh, cut ourselves off, shut the lights out, and, and wander around the dark here hoping for the best in the meantime. Let's utilize what we have. Let's spend our money like Norway has to invest in new technology and build our future, not just cut it off at the knees and, 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 uh, and try to survive. You're not alone in your opposition to, to the carbon tax, obviously, as you, as you know from, from uh, your meetings in, in Calgary. Uh, there are a number of provinces that launched legal challenges. Recently, Ontario and Saskatchewan both lost their initial challenges. We know, for example, Saskatchewan will appeal that uh, to the Supreme Court. Are, are you going to continue with your legal challenge? We will continue as interveners in the, in the process, but what we are going to do is, is to have our, our um, auditor generals, um, our, actually our, our attorney general's office throughout their country to get together and talk about next steps. Because what this is about is not whether the, uh, the, the carbon tax should be imposed or not. It's about the, the federal jurisdiction and the right for them to impose this onto provinces. And what's interesting is Quebec just today have, have put forward their own challenge, you know, suggesting that the, the federal government doesn't have jurisdiction over provincial matters. So well, there'll be they, interveners as well. Yes, exactly. So, so the whole question isn't about just the carbon tax. It's about the federal government imposing on provinces, regardless if they're meeting their emission targets or not. And after all, what is this all about? It's about cleaner, greener New, Brun or New Brunswick, Canada, and it's about meeting emission standards. So let's let us focus on the targets, not focus on a revenue stream for politicians to two, just take advantage two of. Two courts, though, and I, and I take your point that there are appeals, under, well, one appeal at least, underway. Two courts have ruled that the federal government does, in fact, have jurisdiction. Is it my understanding that you're not going to proceed with your own legal challenge, just seek intervener status because of that? Uh, that and the fact that we decided collectively that we would ask for our Attorney General's uh, office to review our standings, review the case, and decide what path we should jointly go forward to, uh, let's say, challenge the federal uh, government's uh, jurisdiction in this area. So that are, those are the next steps. So right now, I won't be moving forward separately to have another court challenge in the province, but I will be working um, with Saskatchewan in their provincial or in their Supreme Court challenge, and uh, and we are going to do through the AG's office an understanding of what are our next steps to challenge the federal government. Is, is uh, the fact though that you're not pursuing your own legal challenge an admission that the federal government, according to at least those two courts, does have jurisdiction here? Well, I think you know we the, the rulings. Um, although obviously we're, we're not happy with them, they they make a statement of their own. So why would I? At this point, without being able to present a different argument, it wouldn't make sense for me to, to use taxpayer dollars to, to go and present the same case. Isn't so, that what the appeal so, is doing? Pardon? Isn't that what the appeal in Saskatchewan is doing? Well, but that's going to the Supreme Court. So that's challenging the very decision on its own right. It hasn't, none of it's gone to the Supreme Court yet. Yeah, just this one from Saskatchewan will at Correct. this point, right? Correct. Okay, yes. I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Premier Higgs. Appreciate your time today. You're very welcome. Thank you, Vashi.
Uh, we invited a number of, of uh, premiers. Some others couldn't make it for scheduling reasons, but we'll all be meeting up tonight in uh, Saskatoon at the Council of the Federation. This was just a brief and fairly informal get-together of some of, some like-minded premiers to talk about uh, jobs, growth, and prosperity. Uh, but uh, we we hope that we'll be, be able to uh, to have fruitful discussions with all of our colleagues starting tonight under uh, Premier Mo's chairmanship. Um, we were fo focused on people who support uh, responsible resource development, pipelines, corridors, and are concerned about the carbon tax, and that's the vast majority of premiers. That was Alberta Premier Jason Kenney explaining why a pre-meeting of some premiers was necessary today. Five premiers had an informal meeting this morning in Calgary. They included Kenney, Ontario Premier Doug Ford, Saskatchewan's Scott Moe, New Brunswick's Blaine Higgs, and Premier Bob McLeod of the Northwest Territories. But the full council of the Federation, as you heard Premier Kenney say there, is set to begin its meeting tonight in Saskatoon. So what was the point of the pre-meeting and why does it, what does it rather indicate about the health of the Federation? Time for the power panel in Toronto, Brad Levine of Council Public Affairs. Yolan James, former Quebec Liberal Cabinet Minister, is with us from Montreal. And here with me in studio, former Director of Policy to Stephen Harper, Rachel Curran, now with Harper and Associates. Hi, everybody. Hello. Nice to Hello. see you. Rachel, I'll start with you. And I'll pose sort of a similar question as I did to New Brunswick Premier Blaine Higgs. This idea, and they kept using the term like-minded. We're like-minded premiers. What does that say for the full council of the Federation? Does it become sort of an us versus them thing? And is that counterproductive? No, I don't think so. I mean, Premier Kenny has been saying for three years that he wants to build a coalition in support of particular economic priorities. And he listed off some of them, right? Resource development, energy corridors, internal trade, internal labor mo mobility. Like these are all really important topics that will advance, hopefully, our shared pros prosperity across the country. And so Premier Kenny has been indicating he wants to take a lead on this. He wants to put together a coalition of premiers who are supportive of that agenda. And I think it's by and large the, the majority of premiers at the provincial level now. And so he's following through on that commitment. So you see him sort of putting to the, together this group that is going to have an economic agenda that will hopefully benefit the country writ large. Does it, does it, is it sort of though setting them up to be at odds with Ottawa? I mean, it's yes, they say all well, that, but they're also really, really harping on Ottawa all the time. Well, well, on, the, on issues like the carbon tax, sure. I think they have a whole list of other things that they want to get accomplished. I don't think there's going to be a lot of, you know, back and forth with, I don't think they want to waste the time on that. To be honest, these kinds of things are the sorts of things that a federal government and a prime minister should be taking a leadership position on. We haven't seen that from the current federal government. In fact, in my view, it's been historically divisive. And so we see the premiers, the provincial premiers, getting together and taking the lead, and I think that's a great thing. Do you think, Yolanda, that's historically divisive? And if it is, is that all on the premiers, or is it all on the Fed? or a mix of both? In that in the Council of Federation, I think it's just important to remember, contrary to the meetings initiated by Ottawa, the Council of Federation, and Jean Charest had been really um, interested in putting that together, is an opportunity for premiers and for different provincial jurisdiction governments to discuss sometimes at odds and, cre and create alliances. But I, I think that discussion will, will um, obviously take place, but I don't think that we can talk about today's meeting without um, bringing up the context of the federal election without bringing up the context of, yes, uh, carbon tax and these like-minded that also happen to uh, be conservative um, uh, um, uh, premiers uh, wanting to to make a statement, I think, and also uh, make sure that the federal government and the federal uh, liberal government is, is well aware, as they already are, surely, that um, that they plan to be a force to be reckoned with as we enter the pre-electoral stage of this. So yes, um, it is, as Rachel mentioned, there will be these um, um, alliances and discussions with respect to the economic um, coalition that he wants to build, but let's also be frank about the fact that that's not all that this um, pre-Council Federation meeting is about, and the, those that are not there are absent for a reason, whether it be um, the Premier of Quebec or even Andrew Scheer, who also is not in the, in the portrait.
Yeah, good. well, he's not He's not a premier. He's but, not a premier, yeah, but, but, uh, but considering yeah. we're, we're, we're talking about conservatives here, this could have been right. an opportunity, considering every politician under the sun, it seems like, for good reason, will want to be uh, present around the stampede activities. <laughs> and so much of this, Brad, is about uh, about the carbon tax, as, as Yolande touched on. Uh, the, the Quebec, the, I just want to play a clip from uh, uh, Scott Moe, the premier of Saskatchewan, talking about how Quebec today confirmed that they would be uh, seeking intervener status in the province's appeal to the Supreme Court. Let's take a listen. And Brad, I'll get you to weigh in. Mm -hmm. We had a, a decision, a split decision in the province of Saskatchewan recently. We are taking that forward. Um, we're taking that forward to the Supreme Court of Canada. We saw an intervention uh, announcement here this morning in Quebec. Uh, also believes this is an infringement in provincial jurisdiction of which uh, we also believe uh, the federal government is in an area that isn't theirs uh, to ultimately operate. It's interesting, Brad, because that rhetoric, Quebec's rhetoric, uh, Blaine Higgs, who we had earlier on the show, he's dropping the province's own legal challenges, but just challenge rather. But he keeps they they all keep talking about jurisdiction as being the big issue. What do you what do you think of where this debate is at politically? Yeah, well, I I, I think that obviously the lead up to the federal election is is a big part of all this. Uh, you know, it is interesting that Quebec has its own uh, price on carbon, yet it yet it uh, yet it's jumping into the fray at this time. I don't know if 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 this that's going to make more that. compelling uh, the case the case here. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, but in terms of of the, I, I think I think that's right. I think the carbon tax is a big part of it because I think the Conservative Party of Canada want the carbon tax to be high up on people's ballot box questions. Uh, whether or not that's going to be successful or not. I think one of the big challenges that they have, and you can see this at Stampede this past weekend, is that there was no photo, at least that I saw, uh, from anybody's Twitter feed with a photo of Premier Doug Ford from Ontario and Andrew Scheer. Uh, you know, right now what we have is, uh, you know, the election just a mere months away. Uh, we know that Doug Ford in the province of Ontario is bringing down uh, Andrew Shearer's numbers. So people don't want to, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy for Mr. Kenny uh, and, and, and Premier Mo to have a, uh, a photo with, uh, with Doug Ford. But uh, I didn't see Andrew Shearer uh, doing that. that that's, that's, that's very interesting. But this whole weekend uh, leading up to the Saskatoon uh, Council of the Federation is about another counter, another place for the opposition. Uh, the opposition to the Trudeau government, and in particular the vehicle through which the carbon tax fight will be will be launched, uh, and it's going to be very curious. Andrew Shear's got to be careful to not get overshadowed. We're talking more about premiers of provinces than we are about the leader of the official opposition. Just mere months away from the federal election, he should be somewhat concerned about being overshadowed. Rachel, do you think that's that's true? Should should Mr. Shear be concerned about I guess what Brad calls overshadowing? Or I mean, it is true that he wasn't seen. He was seen with Premier Kenny. He wasn't seen with Premier. Forward. He did uh, today announce basically calling on the federal government to scrap the clean fuel standard. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that was sort of a big announcement mm -hmm. from uh, mm -hmm. from the conservatives today. But but to to Brad's point, point is is he at risk of being overshadowed by the rhetoric coming from this alliance over the carbon tax? No, not at all. Andrew Shear has been front and center at the Calgary Stampede. He was just at an event in Etobicoke where Premier Ford was attending. Also, here's what I think. I think Brad's trying to deflect from the fact that no. Where in this picture has Jagmeet Singh been seen? So why isn't he at the Calgary Stampede? And he's not going. We Every we, okay. our producer Chris Rance did get confirmed. Interesting. That he was so on. look, I think if you're running to be the national leader, you've got to show up in an event like that. Even Elizabeth May, who's not going to get any votes in Calgary, uh, probably no votes at all in Alberta, is showing up at the Calgary Stampede and like planting her flag. So I think it's a real problem that the leader of the NDP is not there. And why is he not there? Maybe Brad can tell us that. Br Brad, I'll get you to weigh in, and then you'll on. <laughs> Well, I'm, I, I, you'd have to, you'd have to, why don't you call, uh, Rachel, why don't you ask Mr. Singh's I'll, office I'll well, for you, a detailed well, you uh, ask, thing of his question? I'll, I'll ask you but, about just the, the political implications of him, of Mr. Singh not going, and then I'll find exactly yeah. what they said. I'm sure, I'm, well, I'm sure that, I, I honestly don't know, so I, I, I'm merely, I'm merely going to speculate, which is, I'll read which is quickly, what we do on the power panel he, all the time. He won't and be heading to Calgary. He had events in the riding last week. Yes and is on a flight to Toronto today for unmovable events in Ontario. Sure. Okay. Well, you're going to go where, where, where you think you're, you're going to be picking up uh, support. Uh, and obviously, with the decision that the federal New Democratic Party has taken on the position of the pipeline, I mean, take a look at the level of support for the pipeline in the province of Alberta. It is sky high. Uh, and it is, it, is high, it is high in other places. 
So, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a big mystery that Mr., uh, you know, that Jagmeet Singh has chosen to spend uh, time outside of that. You go where uh, the next tier of voters are. You don't go where uh, you've taken a principal stand. And at the same time, I don't see Mr. Shear in places that you're going to see Mr. Singh in. So that's what all the three in the four major uh, parties in the House of Commons right now are, are going to be going after. Where is that next tier of voter? Where can I go and get uh, some support, and you go where the support might be. It's like there's an election going on. Final word to yeah. you, Yolande? No, I was only, I guess we won't have time, but I, we're only coming back to the strategy to, to change the discussion. In the interview, Premier King was talking about the importance of or, or, or emphasizing the whole jurisdiction yes. um, argument as opposed to really focusing on the anti-carbon more policy aspect to it. There's a reason for that, and that's really because um, the Quebec government and, and, and uh, maybe others, I believe PI hasn't, hasn't really been um, very specific as to why they're, they're intervening status and they have a strong green um, presence in their province as well is that um, jurisdiction obviously in a place like Quebec is is very um, supported by people wanting to make sure that the government is autonomous in the defense of jurisdiction. But if uh, Francois Legault or any premier is pr in Quebec is perceived as being anti um, um, uh, carbon tax or anti-policy with respect to um, getting down our emissions, that would be very negative for him in, in the province. So as much as he is intervening in the in the legal um, uh, proceedings, I would not expect to see uh, Francois Legault flipping a uh, pancakes um, in order to reiterate or state that alliance. Okay. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.